we will start a bit from the beginning and the source of everything kind of so the evolution of unreal engine from its origins from 1998 it was the kind of for me personally the best game engine but it kind of in the between the years it evolved to something more than a game engine so literally today its evolution it's grown in a comprehensive tool for various industries supporting real-time rendering architectural visualization showcases film production something that is completely beyond gaming and with some cutting edge technologies such as nanite and lumen and that's only the beginning if you ask me they are kind of revolutionizing the industry of for for performing even better than some dcc applications and what so so Unreal Engine is, is no uh, limited to gaming, meaning, again, it went in the automotive industry, architectural real estate, film and entertainment, and metaverse. That's kind of the headlines. And they are kind of deep in all these industry, industries using the engine in underground or even publicly of evolving their industries and showing more than just using these applications and uh, legacy pipelines like V-Ray rendering and so on with Unreal. Now we go to the kind of pixel streaming technology. I start from the background a bit and then I will go to the hardware story. So pixel streaming is the technology that started in early 2000s in a very beta state and it allows real-time applications being streamed uh, through the web uh, across all platforms desktop mobile and so on and why this matters is because it's completely device agnostic it runs on any device it has kind of global access if you have a scalable solution providing the, the, the streams and it's scalable supporting multiple users interacting with streams. So now a bit about Arcware, uh, how Arcware started. We started in nine, in like 2001, 19. yeah, 19, like 2001. And we started with having crazy R&Ds in the beginning. We started, we are a spin-off of Mifcom, first of all. We had a great knowledge of hardware and great connection to industry, automotive industry and universities and stuff. We had big R&Ds with them, kind of in an underground level, playing around with VR devices in the beginning and so on. Our first kind of uh, touch point was with clients requesting some uh, proofs of concept with these technologies. First, with VR, we developed a collaborative VR experience. A multi, it was kind of a multiplayer, uh, exploring an architectural visualization uh, showcase or showcases. It was a framework kind of you could really input anything, and then we also started playing with the early release of pixel streaming beta on 426 in 220. We explored pixel streaming technology, which we really thought that's maybe a real like deal and it can bring an evolution an evolution and we could do something about it because we had also many requests. And we shifted in 220 like our complete focus from VR technologies to pixel streaming with playing around with like we started our pilot phase, so to say in uh, 19 before, and we had many clients testing the thing a bit underground. First, it was not public. The platform was in the pilot phase. We were playing around, testing the boundaries. We tested all the hyperscalers, uh, first of all, like G GCP, AVS, 
trying to set up something, but then we realized that they were not ready back then for the shader computation, like uh, performance and what pixel streaming is demanding. So with the support of MIFCOM, MIFCOM being the kind of major system integrator here in Germany and the massive knowledge on the hardware side of the things, we realized that we can do it ourselves. So we started our pilot phase in 19 with our own infrastructure and kind of marketing a bit underground and testing out some companies for the upcoming technology. And yeah, you can take about the development a bit. Now, yeah. <laughs> so after some time of the early access phase, uh, we started to think how we can have something that not only us we can use, but other people can take advantage of pixel streaming. So what we have started is to develop our platform, our cloud. So the development started in 2021 and we were uh, developing all the features, all the platform uh, to release the early access in 2023. <clears throat> After some time of development plus uh, getting feedback from our customers during this whole year, in 2024, we released the public uh, version of the platform. So this is the current state of the platform where we have a lot of customers from many industries and customers from countries. And what is making our cloud different is that based on our system, we are able to provide photorealistic uh, 3D experience uh, for the web. That means that you have 3D streaming based on Unreal Engine uh, through the web browser. So you don't need to have a really um, powerful device because you only need web browser and internet connection. Uh, also, by having our GPUs and our own servers, we have the fastest loading times in the market. So that means that we can have uh, an Unreal Engine application running on your browser in seconds, which is pretty awesome. And then uh, another focus for us was our platform has to be user-friendly because uh, we know that many people in 3D they don't have to have uh, web development expertise or something like that. So we wanted to make it easy. So how a career cloud works is uh, pretty simple for the final user. It's in five steps, you, have, uh, you can create your account, you can create your project, then you upload your package, and then you have to create something to share your project, which is really easy, it's our share link. And then you have your application running on the web browser and you can share it with anyone around the world. As you can see in this uh, graphic, it's pretty straightforward. And by having any kind of uh, Unreal application, you can have an awesome experience. Go to the next one. So since our public release in March in 2024 this year, uh, we have more than 4,000 users around the, the whole world. So we have more than five, the 50 industries in more than different 40 different countries. And we achieved in only six months and a half uh, to have a stream more than 4 million of stream minutes. And here is uh, another key of this uh, technology, which is the web browser integration. As we mentioned before, uh, we have the option to stream Unreal Engine applications, but this is only the base. At the moment that you are able to integrate this with uh, the web browser, then you can build whatever you want. So what we did in the in this uh, year of development for the public release, we were developing our own web SDK, but based on the development that Epic Games did for this technology. So you can connect your Unreal application with any front end you want to build. That means that you have endless possibilities by having the custom front end and you can use it only as an interface to interact with your Unreal Engine application, or you can use it as a middleware so you can connect with API, CMS, or any service you have uh, online in order to make a proper experience. That means that you can create configurators, you can create digital twins, 
anything you want, you can do it in the browser. So now what we are going to do, uh, we are going to share some showcases. Uh, you're going to see that we have another screen here that is going to show one of the projects we have. So for example, we have industry like automotive, real estate, entertainment, many industries can take advantage from this. So what I have in the other screen um, is one of our projects we created for showcase where you, what you are seeing here is in real time rendering in our servers. And this is just a web browser. Sure and that. you see that the car is moving. You can play around. You can change the colors. You can see even the interior of the car. You can play around with the configuration of the car. And everything is running in real time. And this, in this case, for example, we are using the um, Matrix City from the mm -hmm. game, which is huge and is really heavy in terms of polygons. But thanks to the Nanite, we are able to stream this. And you see it's running pretty smooth. This is one of the projects. This is another project we have that is going to take a little bit because it's connecting. And this is from for our company, sister company, MIPCOM, where we help them to develop a showcase where you can see the different parts of the PC. And even you can go in detail to the small part of the PC where you can see the GPUs, the fans. You can even go really close to the motherboard and you will see all the details, all the stickers, everything. And this is, again, running in real time in our servers. So anyone around the world with a proper connection uh, for internet and a web browser, no matter the device, can experience the same. This one is um, another project we were collaborating with a JAT company uh, from here, from Munich. They are building a electric JAT uh, together with uh, the electric division of BMW. It's loading. And again, you see here everything in real time where you can play around with the colors. You can switch to different views. You can see any detail you want. And this is a really good tool for any company that wants to uh, share with their customers any product that you can customize. But this, as we said, it's not only for um, configurators, because we have also projects that are using the technology for education and so on. This is another project that is for automotive. In this case, is uh, for Royal Enfield. Okay. And you can see the level of detail in the 3D model. You can see all the flakes on the paint. You can even change any color and you will see the metallic of the paint. On this one, I think it supports also path tracing if you click the P. Talk to me about how how it's how the platform you touched on it being used in education can you tell me a little bit about how it would be or how it is i find that quite interesting so we we have one of our customer who is um creating courses for uh rigs uh so for example you are in a factory and you have accidents instead of having the normal uh, book where you have to read everything they are creating interactive experience so you see that one of your colleagues is uh, in an accident or something like that, and you have to react. So it's kind of a storytelling, and you are in the in the story. So this is also one of the things that you can use for education. Also for education could be digital twins, where you are learning how to fix something, but this uh, particular machine is really expensive. So instead of having the real uh, uh, object, 
you have a digital twin where you can play around without breaking anything. And this is uh, only the beginning. Another one with training and simulation is uh, one of our tier one customers is kind of an oil plant training simula simulator, training the kind of workers, how they behave on situations like Ivan told on a bigger scale, like on the oil plants and stuff, when something happens, what you do or what you have to do, this kind of, this kind of cases, yeah. It's so, it's so interesting and so, so much fun. We've got a lot of questions come in. Keep them coming. Um, uh, if you want me to ask them, I will just put them in the chat. So Amir would like to know that given that rendering happens on the server, what is the typical customer acquisition cost, even though you've given us an extended trial period? So thank you for that. How much is it going to cost us? Okay, so you have a base fee, which is uh, 89 euros per month, and then you pay per use. So you have 10 cents uh, per minute, and depending on your use, you are going to pay that way. The thing is, uh, depending on the customer, the volume of the uh, project and so on, we can have even uh, custom plans depending on, on each particular case. But the base fee is always something that you have to have in order to have proper access to the platform, to share everything without any limitation. And then you have uh, the 10 cents for each minute. The, yeah, I wanted to mention that the, the kind of 29 euros base fee is also kind of covering the, the support we provide mm. because we have then the kind of core plan tier clients have direct access to ticketing and kind of gaining support on the Unreal Engine, on the platform, or even on the front-end level with directly connecting to developers. So the cost of the base fee is mainly covering the, the support we provide, actually. Yeah. Amy is not included, just so everyone is aware. Um, yeah, we're I... also afraid <laughs> for maybe she will take also our job. You know, you never know. <laughs> Yeah, give it 10 years. Oh, we'll get to that later. That is part of the panel discussion. Mike would like to know that, um, do you have any experience in uh, first responder training? He sees a lot of potential for law enforcement, firefighters, EMTs using this kind of technology. Have you had any experience of that yet? We have some customers that are, they are doing that. Yeah. And the good thing is because you can stream everywhere. If you have, for example, a company with a lot of people or um, police or anyone, these kind of things, they can share the same project to everyone so they can connect at the same time. So yeah, we have some of the customers who are doing these kind of things. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for spending your time with us. Please come back to our... Uh...